Welcome back guys and gals, it's good to see you all here this early on. Today we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Gleb Sidorkin from Cell Frames Marketing Team. Welcome. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. All right, good to, good to see you here. Before we begin our line of questions, could you briefly introduce yourself and also Cell Frame to our dear listeners? Yes, um, so my name is Gleb, I'm with the Cell Frame Content Team. Um, kind of a humanities PhD dropout and got into decentralization and been working with a couple of blockchain projects, but I've been with Cell Frame for, I think, three years now, and I'm really uh, excited about Cell Frame as a project, as an ecosystem. Uh, what Cell Frame is, is that we built a beautiful machine, uh, a framework, an infrastructure for delivering what decentralization really has to offer the true promise of, of what's called web three. Um, if you think about web two, you know, it's associated with, uh, social media and kind of the social web, but an effect web three on a deeper level or web two on a deeper level is these big servers and data centers that are built by Facebook and such. And we give them all their data to host and process on these data centers in exchange for um, their service that they provide. And, you know, the same with Google and stuff, all that's all that streaming. And for what we see as Web3 is really to have all those data centers become distributed and those networks become decentralized. And in addition to um, you know, that includes finance, obviously, but of course. what Cell Frame focuses on is other types of services. So we're talking about right now video streaming, we're talking about AI training, all that good stuff. And in addition to all the good stuff that sort of Bitcoiners know why decentralization is great, uh, decentralized networks of other kinds, you know, for shuttling data around are better also in other ways, uh, other than like, you know, the kind of political, I would say, advantages of decentralization is um, you can actually make better, faster, more stable networks using decentralization. So you can make a better, faster, more stable streaming site. Um, you know, sometimes it, <laughs> uh, sometimes Binance Live has issues and it drops yeah. frames. Yeah, like, and, as uh, of now. <laughs> So Sailframe is a platform for us to build um, a decentralized, for example, streaming service, which would uh, be more robust. I mean, there wouldn't be a, and, and like Coinbase, for example, dropped out for six hours yesterday. You know, so we everyone knows, you know, the, a lot of people in crypto know about the benefits of de DEXs and we're building a really revolutionary type of DEX, the Sailframe DEX. Um, but yeah, so in the way that we are doing this kind of creating the true internet of, of value and uh, true web three is to, is by creating a super efficient, uh, blockchain network. It's written in pure C and it can, uh, run on extremely efficiently on either small devices or, or take full advantage of very powerful devices that might be in your home or, uh, in your little, whatever computer you, you might have. Um, so, and, and so that extreme efficiency, that C code allows us to create these powerful networks. There's already Kel VPN is kind of the first trial, uh, truly functioning, ver uh, cell frame, um, parachain mm -hmm. and cell frame based service. And then, so in addition to being able to run these efficient services and on a peer to peer distributed network, it's also able to run, uh, quantum proof signatures. And so the, qu the quantum apocalypse is coming. The drum rolls are beating. The orcs are in, down in the mines. Uh, you hear every every couple of days some new innovation pops up in, that's, that accelerates that D-Day of uh, countdown to quantum uh, quantum computing, which will break traditional encryption. Yeah. And so as a third generation blockchain, as a, I would say the superior third generation blockchain, Cell frame allows us to have these fast services and also to host um, the new quantum proof uh, signature types, which are extremely heavy and large file size. 
So it's a quantum proof service oriented blockchain that truly delivers the promise of Web3. I see. I see. Thank you for that amazing answer. And what inspired the creation of SelfFrame? And, you know, how does it differ from other blockchain networks in terms of service orientation and also infrastructure? Right. Um, the inspiration, this kind of continues to this day. I think a lot of it comes from, you know, Dimitri, who's our technical lead, our founder, uh, CTO, and, and, and his team looking at what they actually need and want from their computers, right? And so back in 2017, I think is kind of the maybe unofficial birth date of cell frame project. We were looking, you know, the Dimitri and his team have a, a deep background in C code and highly efficient um, programming that can really get into the hardware and, and exploit hardware. So they, they saw blockchains, obviously the first generation blockchains are great. They offer the promise of decentralization, decentralized networks uh, and all the good stuff. But then there were problems with transaction speed, um, block sizes are too small, et cetera. So as a third generation blockchain, we solve down at the very basic architectural level we solve those scaling problems, uh, you know, so there's zero knowledge proofs for uh, all that stuff that kind of is, is being done in layer two right now for something mm -hmm. like Ethereum. That's all kind of at the very core of the code on, on a basic level. So speed is solved for um, and a variety of and this post quantum security and sort of everything that comes with what you would call a third generation blockchain. Uh, but what what di what distinguishes us is this uh, ability to host and to create uh, extremely powerful and efficient networks. So we our, our nodes, uh, cell frame node can run on a very small machine, like a Raspberry Pi or like your MacBook from two thousand or whatever. <laughs> I see. Um, and uh, so that efficiency and, and that scalability uh, kind of. I think yeah, it, it's um, it's distinct. I think you have to get into it on a on architectural level, and I think I think the time is ripe for a blockchain solution that didn't just kind of promise uh, decentralization, but actually delivered like powerful things that that can be even better than centralized networks, and that people using it won't actually really have to care that much. If it's centralized or decentralized, it'll just have obvious advantages, including to be faster th than uh, a centralized network, right? Because you can host things, move data around in a more local way. If it's not just one data center in your country, say, or in yeah, uh, it's it's being hosted around more robust, resilient networks that are more stable, and then on top of that, all the benefits we get of uh, with decentralization, sort of ownership of your data. Of course. Um, and ownership of your keys and your money and everything like that. I see. I see. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's a great you know effort that you're putting into the ecosystem, and it's very you know highly necessary in my opinion. So I highly appreciate it. And can I ask a little bit about self frame and how it enhances scalability and performance for different applications? Okay. Yeah. So on a technical level, I mean. Um... There are certain things that are kind of, like I said, sort of part of layer two right now. So in terms of sharding, uh, we have what's called a dual, dual layer sharding. So there's a homogenous layer and a non-homogenous layer. So transactions are kind of grouped into uh, in, in these different ways. And also things are done on, on an operating system level within your machine to also enhance uh, the, the speed and processing and scalability. So there's there's different layers kind of built into uh, what allows us to, to be super fast and to actually, uh, you know, have an ambition to do something like, uh, you know, create a streaming service. Um, you know, in addition to have fast transaction speeds and low, low fees, uh, there's, there's elements of the, of the architecture 
in, in addition to just kind of the, the sharding um, and, and the interoperability layer is another part of that. But the, in addition to those kinds of architectural solutions that are commonly known in layer two, mm -hmm. there's some aspects to the, um, to the code that allows things to be done on an operating system level within your machine to also uh, radically increase the speed of, of something that's, that would be on-chain uh, computations or uh, transactions. I see, I see. All right, thank you. Yeah, speed and efficiency, it's both very crucial things. So I appreciate it. And how does cell frame perform on uh, different devices? You've mentioned, you know, it can run on your, you know, MacBook from 2000 and uh, f from supercomputers to smart fridges, you know, how, how, how mm -hmm. is that possible? Well, if um, par partially it's just writing in that low level language. So when you write, for example, in Java, you have all these layers of abstraction uh, that just slow it down by orders of magnitude. Um, so, and you, you see now it's like we were a little bit prescient with the whole um, quantum apocalypse thing because in 2017, nobody was really talking about it and now yeah. it's big. But I think you're also pretty prescient with the C uh, programming. I, I've, I've been noticing like, I just moved to California. I've been trying to get more into like the Silicon Valley Twitter space and they <laughs> you, there's like all these groups popping up. Oh, wait a minute. We need to be we need to be delivering our product in C because it's so much faster. It's just you, uh, these apps, the levels of abstraction create sort of drag. Right. And, and this yeah. sort of non abstract. So it's like C is one layer above com uh, computer machine code. Like there's, I saw an interesting project recently that's like trying to rewrite the internet in C because it, you know, it runs in HTML, which has advantages, right? But then it's not as fast. So um, yeah. that's really the fundamental aspect of why we're able to, I mean, and kind of there's, there's, a, there's design features <laughs> that allow for that too. But um, yeah, I mean, that's what kind of everything in the architecture is geared towards high performance uh, starting with, and high performance on a, um, you know, efficient, and that, that that allows us to run on those smart fr smart fridges, to have lightweight uh, code. I see, I see. Thank you so much for that answer. And let me give you a much needed break and remind people of Cellframe's yeah. main website. Here on your screens, guys, is cellframe.net. The links will be shared in the chat periodically, so make sure that you interact with it. Check it out, service-oriented blockchain platform. You can access their social media, and their documents and links and more information about the project. Like we say on every single stream, nothing we say can be com considered any financial advice and you should always do your own research. But if you just give a look at cellframe.net and its documents like I have, you'll all reach the same conclusion. So I highly suggest it. Make sure that you do so. We'll check out their socials in a little bit as well. And let's get back to our questions. So. Cellframe uses, like you just said, post-quantum encryption by default. Can you elaborate on the importance of this feature for the security of the network? Yeah, um, I mean, right now in, in our pre-quantum apocalypse days, as we count down, um, that feature, you know, it it's like for, for now, Bitcoin hasn't been hacked, right? Uh, your your yeah. private keys are safe. So that, as far as security, uh, that feature is just looking ahead and kind of future proofing. And I think, you know, it's only a matter of time. Um, so the quantum computers, just to give a background, someone who I'm kind of like, I always forget that I... I have my newsfeed uh, geared towards quantum apocalypse stuff, but maybe not everyone <laughs> knows. But um, yeah, one of the things that uh, a quantum computer, like even when we have, uh, I think we have to reach a, lim a threshold of about a thousand qubits. Right now, there's only been maybe a couple hundred max uh, computers produced uh, that can do that, and there's still error correction things. But in a very short time frame, we are looking at a quantum computer that can easily crack these encryptions mm -hmm. that we've been using for decades uh, to protect data. And aside from blockchain, governments also 
use these encryption types. And one of the things that um, quantum computers are especially good at is cracking these encryptions. So we have institutes, um, NIST, um, others who are actively develop, uh, testing and developing different algorithms. So yeah, we, we have, uh, we integrate, we, part of cell frames uh, architecture also allows us to quickly and without actually even interrupting the functioning of the network, change or upgrade our security and our encryption type. So right now we, we've tested a couple of the encryptions that are popular and, and are approved by this these government agencies, so institutes, trying to see which ones performs best. We also have multi-signature, so you can encrypt, you can actually have multiple encryption types on your wallet. And so when we're, as we prepare for this quantum situation, we know not only are ha have the opportunity to use to have our entire network protected by these encryption types, we also have the opportunity to be agile and to uh, incorporate new ones as they might come up. Uh, say if some of these are actually hacked um, or proven to be vulnerable uh, to a quantum attack. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's and that 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 takes also something that the other legacy blockchains are starting to worry about. And Vitalik recently made a post about how he's been working on like uh, a transition to post quantum for years. But when you have to transition from pre from traditional to post quantum, that's a whole set of problems that it actually might not even work without. Uh, losing all the anonymity without having to do KYC. So yeah, that's the post quantum security uh, plan for cell frame. I see. I see. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for that answer. And how about the types of decentralized services and applications that can be built on cell frame? And, you know, how does its architecture support these services? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> One thing that was interesting, Dmitri mentioned recently, as far as what we're looking to build in the future, is services that can take advantage of different aspects of your machine. So the first uh, service that we built that's a super good working VPN called Kel VPN, and so that allows us to take advantage of your computer's connectivity to provide a service to others who need a VPN uh, service. So we so because of the the way that the, it's designed and with the C code, it, it it can directly interact with the hardware, and so with with Kel VPN, you know your connectivity, your modem, um, it can utilize that efficiently. There's things to kind of when you build a network like that, you have to kind of build the cell frame node um, is you know obviously it, it works in in the as a blockchain in a classic way for validating transactions, but that same node can then become a service provider. And the cert and then it's and then you have to build an architecture that we have the tools for you to do that, that will balance and optimize the flow of, of data. So mm -hmm. uh, with, with VPN, you know, you have you can do automatic routing and you can choose or you can choose on a on a marketplace. Um, of, of peer to peer uh, VPN service from your peers in the network. Other, other aspects of the machine besides connectivity, right? We have the, your video processing. So that's the, we're, we're working on a plugin that will <clears throat> do what we're doing now uh, through Google Meet, right? But instead of shuttling this, these packets of data off to a big Google server, uh, or you know, however localized those are, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> those packets will be shuttled around to different nodes, which can play different roles in the network. So a service node can act as a balancer node to to optimize the flow of data. It can it can if it has a strong video card, it might just it might be for video reencoding, things like that, right? Um, I see. Then moving and then moving on to other types of computation. So one thing that we're really excited about is the potential of AI training and uh, running. So if you have a, if you have this distributed network, so 
uh, you know, imagine torrent, BitTorrent, but for AI. Um, so you're you're going to be you can use your computing power, however much you have, to contribute to this network. Maybe you get paid for your computation. Maybe you get paid for your computation in a, by having a stake in the profits of that AI. So there's a lot of ways that you can uh, organize a, a decentralized network for people to gain benefit, for people to gain um, passive income or to, or to have a stake and a say <clears throat> in the way that that service is run. Um, so yeah, there's, there's other aspects. Uh, obviously, there's a whole range. I think all, all web services that are currently done in the cloud we see as eventually being done in what we uh, the fog, mm -hmm. fog computing, uh, a, a huge distributed network of smaller devices that are uh, efficiently organized uh, by the self-frame network. I see, I see. So it's basically efficient in every single way that you can imagine. Basically, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the number one priority, right? Um, yeah. I mean, people have asked, you know, well, is C code maybe some have said it's slightly more less secure than some other uh, languages, which you know Dmitri's addressed that like in kind of in the era of machine learning, it's really it's less about the code itself and more about uh, what you do with it. And but anyway, so we obviously don't sacrifice security, but everything in the architecture is geared towards that performance element. I see. I see. All right. Thank you so much for that answer. And how about self frames built in payment system and private shards that contribute to lower gas consumption and higher security and also easier development? Right. Yeah. Private shards are an, a, an aspect of the security and privacy um, that we're trying to build into the network. You know, a lot of the kind of generation, third generation blockchain challenges. Um, so your, your question was kind of in two parts. It was a, a little confused. Maybe we, could, we can break it down. So sure. if you, uh, if you could re maybe restate it. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, uh, the first thing yeah. I want to know is how does cell frames built in payment system and private shards mm -hmm. contribute to lower gas consumption? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, so uh, uh, as far as, you know, built in payment system, that's, uh, you know, what, we're not just building, obviously, decentralized networks like torrent. We're building a decentralized network that is um, incentivized and runs on the fuel of micropayments. So if you're, mm -hmm. you know, so say with Kel VPN, um, we, we've already launched the decentralized mode where you select uh, your server and you and the, there's like a order book. So the services are, are, are run, like I said, this is like, I think what really Web3 should be is that the services are run. And I think people will become more and more used to these kind of order books and micropayments. You know, there'll be a really good, easy V. Um, interface for people to be able to use decentralized services that are incentivized uh, th through these payments. For sure. And obviously for that to work, since, <laughs> you know, every little bit of data um, has its own correlation of, of, of a payment that mm -hmm. goes with it, uh, the, the payment system itself has to be extremely robust and fast. So, yeah, so that, I mean, that's the first kind of thing is that in, in, in addition to being able to build these networks, it's they're all going to be um, they're all going to be blockchain enabled and the, the with high high enough, you know, extreme the <clears throat> the actual transaction speed limit of the cell frame network is not limited. The, mm -hmm. the way that the sharding is done, you're only going to be limited by how fast your connection is. I see. Right. So yeah, and then so that and then obviously that has to be secure, and uh, people want um, <clears throat> people want to have privacy in those transactions as well, and so that's all built into the code as well. Uh, and so yeah, we're talking about private shards, um, and then so yeah, so the, and the way that the 
sell frameworks is that when you build a service, you can build a chain uh, that in, then integrates on the interoperability level of the whole cell frame network. So then your token, right? So if KelvyPN has a token um, that's on a on a cell frame chain on the layer one, and that token is going to be what uh, the payment method for KelvyPN services, and then Kel the cell token itself is on the bottom layer for validation and and such things i see i see yeah naturally all right thank you so much for that answer and can we discuss a little bit about cell frames approach to preventing terminal attacks including those involving quantum computing you know and um, that doesn't require any user migration terminal yeah right so Okay. Um, yeah. So the the for the quantum attack <clears throat> that we that we are foreseeing when a powerful quantum computer comes online, you know, if if an aggressive actor, you know, has this, they could easily just crack private keys and move money around, and it would be chaos. Yeah. Uh, it would be chaos. People would lose funds, and possibly, you know, possibly the faith in the entire system would be lost. So the legacy blockchains like Bitcoin are vulnerable to this. Um, one way that you we can save the Bitcoin network, for example, is to bridge uh, and wrap all of Bitcoin's every Satoshi and run it on a uh, cell frame. I see. So that would actually extend the post quantum umbrella of um, <clears throat> uh, of cell frame of the cell frame network on, onto those assets and keep them behind that wall. Uh, so a, ra a sort of a wrapped cell frame version of Bitcoin, uh, we think, might be a good solution uh, to these attacks, which would cause chaos. And in in this situation. Um, you know, no one would be able to prove that their private key is their private key. There, there could be imposters, you know, and there would be uh, yeah. a loss of a loss of anonymity required to c control that situation. Uh, so, whereas we, since we already have um, our wallets and everything are already protected by the post quantum mm, algorithms or post quantum encryption uh, types. Um, that would protect the cell frame network from such an attack. Hopefully, yeah, because like you said, it would be uh, other chaos. You know, <laughs> it's it's a horrible yeah. scenario to think about. But yeah, thank you. Uh, let's give you another much needed break and remind people of your socials. Right here on your screens is cell frame network community channel. You can chat with others, get help from moderators. Just make sure that you join it. Links will be shared in the chat periodically like we said and make sure to go to cellframenet the handle on twitter make sure you follow them like i have and activate notifications they're always making updates and announcements and you know information never hurts so make sure that you give it a check and give them a follow on there thank you so much for giving it a shot and let's continue with the questions by the way guys i would just want to disclose we are having some issues with the streaming service i'm not sure what's causing it but we'll play this probably again, stream it again at a later on date. Maybe if you're watching this, you're right now at the 15th of May and you're seeing this live, like not live, but you know, watching it later on. So apologies for that. There were some uncontrollable things happening, but yeah, enjoy the stream regardless. And let's continue with the questions. Can you tell me what are the benefits of CellFrame's service-oriented architecture for building second-level protocols and also dedicated servers services? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, um, you could avoid uh, being reliant on a single kind of server uh, for, for your services. If you know, if one one uh, drops out the rest of the network can kick in. Um, so that's one thing that when you're building 
services on on a distributed network uh it's more robust um it's more stable it's less vulnerable to attacks uh, and another aspect of the way that services are built on cell frame is um, we have what's called the tdaps truly decentralized apps uh, mm -hmm. currently apps are dapps right apps we all know are centralized they have a single server uh, or decentralized dApps may be decentralized in that um, there, there's a distributed network of servers. However, there is always, uh, because they're, they're based on a smart contract, there's always a single smart contract owner and all the, <clears throat> all the funds that go through that, that circulate in payment for that service all go through that one choke point, um, through that one smart contract and that one holder and the private key that, that holds that. So with cell frame services, that's kind of one of the really cool innovations that we are proposing as kind of a new standard really for decentralization is the TDAP, which uh, runs on a, as a form of a plugin. And it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like immortal once, as long as there's people to support it and people running it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no single smart contract owner and the actual payment are, are, uh, are truly peer to peer. Uh, they don't go through this single smart contract. I see. I see revolutionary. Oh. I like it. Thank you. And yes. how does cell frame ensure the flexibility and modifiability of its protocol to accommodate future technological advancements and requirements? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we, you know, the Dmitri and the team identified early on is that um, all this, uh, all this stuff with hard forks and like civil wars and uh, Ethereum and stuff. Uh, whenever you need a change in the protocol, you need to do a hard fork and it's just madhouse. So the way that, it, that there's decrees, a system of decrees that can be used uh, to modify the blockchain and keep up with the times. I mean, I think that's really huge right now. Uh, whether you look at security issues that can come up in the future or new demands, um, new technologies that that come up uh, in order to keep up with that effectively. Uh, you know, we built that in, into the, that's kind of, um, that, that, that is something that we identified early on as something that the third yeah. generation blockchain needs to have. Exactly, exactly. It needs to be flexible. And can you share any success stories that are currently utilizing or it will utilize cell frames technology and what impact they have had? Yeah, I mean, we're... <clears throat> so like I mentioned, KelVPN is our flagship service that's fully operational. And it is, uh, I would say, a success story. I mean, like I said earlier, a lot of, you know, I think like a lot of good programmers, like hardcore uh, people, like they, they want to build, they want to use what technology that they want to use. Like they, yeah, they, they don't accept like a subpar uh, performance technology. So we really needed VPN. Um, a lot of the team is in Russia. There's there's blockage, you know, internet blockages. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people use VPNs for all kinds of reasons. So we built an extremely robust VPN. Um, it, it's, it, we found that it's successful in, it was, it was working well in China when a lot of uh, VPNs weren't, and it's just extremely fast. Like I, I, I use it every day. Um, and if I need to download something or, or use any kind of high, high throughput, um, capacity so they're actually I, I i think it's true that it actually is faster than uh your normal internet wow uh, because it, it it can um kind of optimize the the data flows so that's a great success story for us and then you know we've got um our, our next big project that's already coming up is node sys which is work on a decentralized factory. And so they're, they're, they're getting into the hardware business. Decentralized factory. 
Yeah. So the idea is that you say you need an order. If you need a device produced, um, you, you can put up um, an order that can be executed by people with 3D printers. There's a lot of people now who have uh -huh. 3D printers in their homes or they have a small shop. Uh, and besides 3D printing, other kinds of hardware production capabilities. So I think that's a really interesting new uh, direction that cell phone is going right now. They, we pr we provided uh, presented some hardware that we built, some terminals for running a cell frame node and dashboard. So just a little device that's special built, um, good form factor and sort of the right amount of performance for a cell frame node. Um, so we're getting into the, this, I think that that narrative of like sort of decentralized meets, meets hardware uh, is a, a big, um, it is a big thing that's coming up. It is, it is, yeah. It, it's super interesting, actually. Uh, and it, it, it fills me up with uh, questions, you know? It, uh, wow. Uh, so how would you, you know, uh, ensure that the products are, you know, uh, I guess, how, how would you ensure their quality, I mean, you know, uh, the, the products that mm -hmm. are being printed? That's that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah, I mean, you would have to, um, you know, you would have to have like, basically, it would still, it wouldn't be like, I don't think it would be so chaotic as to just anyone can jump on an order, um, you know, but you, you could sort of create a, a group, uh, a team of builders uh, that mm -hmm. would have a, a reputation within the network uh, and reviews and, and everything like I that. I see. So, yeah, it would be, um, yeah, it would be incentivized through blockchain, but also have uh, reputational uh, tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. along those lines, I think, is a perfect solution for that. All right, thank you, thank you so much. And how about some significant updates that have been implemented in CellFrame in recent months, maybe, or um, you know, and how do these improvements directly benefit users and developers on the platform? Well, I think it was about, it's all, I think it's almost going on a year. It was this year that we launched mainnet and that was a huge <clears throat> step. So now we have people, you know, the community are operating nodes. Um, that, that was a big step. And then right now we're sort of building out a lot of the features that are going to, I think Dmitry was saying there's, we kind of have like a, maybe a year timeline where the main machine of cell frame <clears throat> infrastructure is going to be completed. Um, so right now it, it's a little bit under the, under the hood kind of update, but the cell frame node itself, um, the, the, arc, the code of cell frame node as a software package, uh, has a new version. Um, so that's an important part. Um, mm -hmm. They're kind of this kind of internal, they're switching it to JSON and um, there's kind of <laughs> sort of be under the hood elements of that. Um, uh, KelVPN launched this decentralized mode recently. That was exciting because it's introduced that, um, like I was talking about that order book kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then cell frame decks, um, been working hard on that. And so cell frame decks is going to be really interesting. It's already live. Um, and oh, it's live. It, it's, it's live within CF 20. I mean, so, uh, once the, the next big roadmap item is going to be the bi-directional bridge, and that's going to allow migration of other type of tokens and wrapping into cell frame. And so that'll kind of boost the the number of assets that are actually available to trade on the DEX. I see. But the actual functionality is live. And <clears throat> so for tokens that are live on the backbone uh, CF20 standard. And yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting um, DEX. You know, we, again, going back to the theme of having decentralized services that, that are as good or better than the centralized ones. One of the things, for example, is right now is that centralized services, uh, centralized exchanges have this really nice order book layout 
interface that, that you can use very efficiently. And we can offer that on a decentralized exchange uh, because our, our DEX is, uses conditional transactions. And that's a type of architecture that actually is for all the all our dApps. But it's going to be really good on um, to run an exchange uh, because you're going to be able to visualize those order books uh, kind of in the same way that traders are used to using uh, with centralized exchanges yeah, now. Definitely, I see that that's a super nice news that you're talking about, and it's you know too many to count even. I appreciate it, and best of luck to you in those areas in the future. And looking forward, maybe. What are the next major milestones that Cellframe plans to achieve? And are there any significant new features or maybe partnerships that we can expect in the coming quarters? Uh, yeah, well, so <clears throat> the bi-directional bridge uh, feature is big. Um, that's that's going to supercharge the DEX. It's going to allow, um, it's going to be important for our the Cell token because um, we, we have that people... Uh, right now, you know, the liquidity can't move back and forth as easily between. So, and that's also going to allow us to list our native tokens on the centralized exchanges. So that, so in, in terms of the um, the token itself and CF twenty standard, uh, the bidirectional bridge is going to be huge. Obviously, we have to make sure that it's one hundred percent secure uh, before that's launched. But that's coming up soon. Um, and then, you know, we've. After once, uh, like I said, we're sort of the team is extremely focused on kind of finishing the machine, the cell frame uh, architecture on its basic level, probably within the next year. And that includes the sharding, uh, mm -hmm. which we, we've implemented the main net, but the sharding still has to be applied to that. Um, and uh, smart contracts. So that we haven't launched smart contracts on our on the cell frame backbone network yet. So once those those once those things are launched and we have the fully functioning kind of cell frame net uh, as it needs to be, then it's going to then it's going to be about the services. Um, we're, we're, then it's going to be about building out the the video, the um, yeah, um, the AI and whatever everything. It, Things you know, and, and at that point, I think it'll be you know it'll become more attractive, um, and for our partners who are interested but are waiting for some of these other features uh, in I order to, to start building. I see. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, I'm wishing you the best already, and I it's been very nice to meet you, Gleb. And hopefully, we'll do this again in the future. Anything you want to add before we say farewell? Um. Well, to join in, you know. Get, get in our get in our um, socials. Start hosting. Uh, start running a node. Start building. You know, Cell Frame is a great, great community. It has a, it has everything in it. Um, I think people. Yeah. So join in and um, learn with us and build with us and uh, have fun. All right. It's been an honor once again. Thank you for joining. And uh, guys, to those who are listening and uh, Mr. Gleb, uh, I'm once again sorry about the technical difficulties. There's you know nothing we could do. But tomorrow on the 15th of May, you'll probably see this broadcast in full definition. So stay tuned for that and take care for now. And yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Next time we'll do it on the cell frame video conferencing uh, service. <laughs> sure, sure. Maybe right. uh, yeah, later on. It'll be more stable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Once right, thank you very much. Yeah, it was a good, uh, good talking to you. You're a good host. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. That was Mr. Gleb. Very nice to meet him. Hopefully you've enjoyed him as much as I have. Make sure that you check out cell frame right here on your screen, cellframe.net, beautiful website, good, you know, UI and, you know, uh, design as well. I always appreciate a decent website. It's, you know, not to be overlooked. That's what draws the attention of many, many users. And hopefully it does to you too. It has a unique theme. So check it out, check out their documents and yeah, join on their socials. Here on your screens is their main Twitter page. 
cell frame net is the handle and here is their main telegram group chat if you want official help if you have any questions after this ama or tomorrow's replay make sure that you ask away they will answer your questions thank you for joining once again and i'll see you all on the next one take care for now and goodbye